This is part two of Decorate a Great Room. In part one, I took you through the first four steps of my decorating process. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below. I hope you get a chance to watch it. This is part of a series of a lake house build and design. We have one big project that we've been working on and that is a lake house. Now, let's continue with part two of Decorate a Great Room. Step five, choose your paint. It was pretty easy to choose since I had my countertop material, all of my fabrics. I even had my wood tones chosen, so I laid everything out. It was very easy at that point to choose a good neutral color that I could put on the walls and on the ceilings. Please think about putting paint on your ceilings. Your ceiling is the fifth wall. You really need to think about that. It is wonderful to carry that color up instead of chopping it up and putting a bright white ceiling in a room that I was trying to make cozy and neutral and warm. That bright white would have really broken up that look for me. Think about that when you're doing your rooms. Really consider doing a ceiling paint that's the same as the wall paint. Doing all of that really did help me bring together all of those elements that I chosen previously. If I had had to, I could have done a custom color to get exactly what I needed. I was just lucky enough to be able to find that in a Benjamin Moore color deck. One other thing, in Pinterest, they actually have Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Bear, a lot of different paint companies have these little paint chips that they put out there on Pinterest that you can drop into your boards. I use those things constantly. I love getting an idea of what the color is. I understand it's not going to be the same when I paint it on my wall, but it does tell you a little bit about undertones and how it works with other things that you're choosing. And it helps you at least break the choices down to maybe one or two different colors that you can then go to the store and test. They're very helpful. I think they're pretty true to color. And when I was trying to select my colors, I actually use those little paint chips and drop them into each one of my boards, just trying to decide when I opened the board, which one made me feel the way I wanted to feel. So think about doing that too. It's really, really easy. It keeps you from having to paint on the walls too many different colors before you make your choice. And if you're like me and don't have a wall because it's construction, it helps you to make some decisions without having drywall up. Step number six, choose your wood tones. I had some already chosen for me. I had an old farmhouse table that I was going to use and it really did define what I was going to do regarding floors and regarding my cabinetry. Normally, I don't sweat matching furniture to floors, but since I was choosing the floors with this room, this was the room that actually I had to choose the floors for. We ended up using them throughout the rest of the house. I really wanted to at least get into the same tones as this honey colored pineish table that I was using. I had another piece that was very similar to that. It was a credenza that I purchased from the same person that I purchased the club chairs from. Got these for a great price. Wanted to make sure I could use these and tonally make sure that everything went together. So yes, I did try to match things up or at least be in the same colorway when I chose the stain for the floors, but you don't really have to sweat that too much when you're working on other rooms. Step number seven, do you have any existing pieces you have to work with? Yup, you know I've got nothing but existing pieces I have to work with. I had the farmhouse table. We'd had that for such a long time. Then I had the credenza that I purchased from my friend. I had the two club chairs I purchased from my friend that had to be recovered. Then I had my 1987 Camelback sofa that dadgummit I was gonna use. I've been carrying that thing around for 40 years now, so I'm gonna use it. I had had that reupholstered several times. This last iteration was a cherry red. It was beautiful. And I almost used it in the house as a cherry red sofa but then realized it was just not gonna be serene enough. I wanted something that was a little more calming and I didn't want that sofa to be screaming at me when I walked into the room. Ah! I'd rather the views be screaming at me. So I decided I'm just gonna use very serene fabrics, cover this with the fabric I chose earlier 
and it started to pull together. Even though stylistically the club chairs really didn't go with the sofa, they started to go when I used the same fabric on each one. That is something to think about. You are probably going to be mixing all kinds of styles that you have accumulated over the years. You can unify all of those with fabric and color. I didn't get through this without buying a few new pieces, and I'm glad I did. There are some things you really should buy new. I think dining chairs are one of those things. You really want something sturdy. You are going to hold different sizes of guests in those chairs, and you want them to not be creaky, and you don't want them to be delicate, and you do not want them to be precious, especially at the lake. So I bought some good, sturdy Windsor type chairs to go around the farmhouse table. And they're black because we have little notes of black going throughout the house. I also bought counter stools to go around the square island that we have in the kitchen area. I wanted two stools on one side, two on another that come into a corner so that these two people on each side could face each other while they ate. We use them all the time. People gather around, but I did make sure that they were wide stools. Again, we have all shapes and sizes of guests. I wanted to make sure that everybody would feel comfortable sitting on the stools and not feel like they were gonna teeter-totter off of it or that the stool couldn't hold them. I also made sure there were arms on the chairs so you could sit back and talk and not worry about falling off the back. So backs and arms, very important. I chose to do a washable, wipeable leather. I really do like upholstered stools. I like them a lot. But the first time I had one and one of my guests spilled Kool-Aid, it was one of my kid's friends, on the countertop and it proceeded to roll straight onto the stools. I said, I'm never doing that again. I need to be able to wipe those suckers up and keep going. So I have sort of a sling, almost like a director's chair type of stool that we are using and they have been wonderful. And I got those at Crate and Barrel. I have two splurges in this room and one of them is a bench that I bought to go in the sitting area. It is sort of a Windsor referential bench, but it also looks very modern and is the same tone as the farmhouse table and the credenza. What I loved about it is it is a place to sit. It is actually very, very comfortable but when you're sitting across from it in club chairs and looking out the window that it sits in front of, the sliding doors are right behind it, you can still see. You can still see through the spindles and it's not obstructing the view. It doesn't close the room in. Think about how you are obstructing a view when you're buying things like light fixtures, lampshades, pieces of furniture. You may be obstructing a view and you may not even realize it. Think about how things are gonna look when you sit and place them in the room. I remember mentally walking through the room and saying, how is this gonna look when I turn here? How is this gonna look when I turn here? Just trying to figure out what my sight lines were going to be and would things be where they needed to be without messing up what was already there and that was a fantastic view. Think about placement. Another space saver was a banquette that I put on one side of the dining table. It was built into the wall and on Etsy, I found a really pretty, kind of cool black leather cushion that goes along the back of the wall. It came with the leather hardware that you needed to hang it and it was very easy to install. It looks so good and I can wipe that down too in case somebody decides to spill something. But I did not put a bench on the banquette itself. Again, afraid too much that people were going to be spilling things and stuff would get up under the cushion. So you sit directly on the banquette, but you can lean onto the cushion. I can also push that table up against the wall and give more room to people who are walking through when we are not using the dining table. So it ended up being a very good choice for that particular space. I also bought a new coffee table. I wanted a special one for the house. And I wanted one that was glass on top and then had a shelf on the bottom. On that shelf, I put an old block and tackle set that belonged to my husband's father. It was something he used when he was young. He played with it a lot. He put swings on it. And it was an old beat up red color. And it was the only thing he wanted that was his dad's. And he got it right before we opened the house up. So I thought it would be kind of cool to just spread it out on that bottom shelf so he could see it all the time. He loves it. And it doesn't mean anything to anybody else, 
but to us, it's really, really special, and this is the perfect space for it. Final step, choose your lighting and your hardware. There wasn't a lot of lighting to choose for this room. We really got to the point where if we weren't using a ceiling fan, we were using basically the recessed lighting. It's cheaper and it didn't add too many elements and it's hopefully gonna keep us from dating the house too much. I did need a light fixture to go over the dining room table. I had to make sure that I could see through it because it's hanging right in front of a window. I did not want something large, I didn't want it to be bulky, and I did not want it to be solid. So this particular fixture is one that allows us to see through it, to see out on the porch, and then further out into the lake. Other fixtures, lamps and floor lamps. We don't have a lot of space in there, it's a small space. I do not have room for occasional tables. So I had to have a floor lamp next to the sofa, and then I have another one that's in the corner of the room where we have a little sitting area. I tried not to choose one that had a fabric shade. I did not want to obstruct any views, so I used some smaller metal shades on these. They seem to be doing the trick. I did use two lamps that did have fabric shades to go on the credenza against the wall. They are a concrete look, and I was trying to tie that in with my concrete look countertops and with the fireplace that has a concrete look as well. So we've been through our eight steps. We're just about finished with this room, but we have some things to consider. The fireplace. We looked at so many different types of fireplaces, brick, stone. Honestly, I really just wanted a concrete fireplace. As you might imagine, I couldn't afford the support system for a fireplace, which would have been even more than a support system for the countertops. So I chose a schmear that looks like concrete that was applied over the drywall. It looks pretty good. Very happy with it and highly recommend that. So look into a schmear. It's a very thick sort of pasty substance that you rub across the drywall. You can put it on brick as well. And it just gives a kind of a rough, unfinished look. And I wanted that on the fireplace. I wanted something kind of rustic. We finished it out with a very plain mantle. My second splurge was a window seat. We built one into the corner on the left side of the fireplace. We put some storage underneath it, which was really smart. I kind of wish I had done more storage. But the top of it is almost as big as a twin mattress. So I had a cushion made. I used the same fabric on that cushion that I used on the two club chairs and on the sofa. What it allowed me to do was then go wild with all kinds of pillows all kinds of textures, all kinds of patterns, as long as I stayed within the three colors that I'm using, and that is that green beige color, black, and then a sort of a deep terracotta orange. And it is, to me, one of the most special spots in the whole house. It's a great place to sit when it's raining outside. You can watch the lake and just watch the rain come down or watch the stars at night, but it's comfortable enough to actually sleep on because it's long enough to sleep on. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say it, rugs. I love ruggable rugs, love, love, love. You can wash them, blah, blah, blah. I say it in every episode, but you need to think about that. They're wonderful. Curtains, I took them to the ceiling. We had, I think they were 10 foot ceilings. We took them all the way to the top. I bought some that were pre-made. That was great, saved me a lot of money. They're lined. I don't know how it happened because this I did not plan, but they're actually the same color as my paint color. So that was lovely. I had windows over my window seat. I went ahead and just bought another pair of the same curtains, took them to a seamstress, had those hemmed and hung those over the window seat. Wonderful, seamless, and they blend in. You might be an artist and you don't know it. So think about what kind of art you have. Some people love pottery, some people love to paint. I like photography. I decided I was going to use my own art because my price is awesome. Mine are landscapes of the area, I would say within a 10 mile radius of the house. I did barn photos, just some beautiful landscapes, beautiful pictures of the lake. I loved them. I sent them off, had canvases made, large canvases, 
hung those around the house, I did not have to frame them. If you get wrapped canvases, you don't have to frame them. That saves a ton of money. And I covered big chunks of wall space. Think about what you do. You may have some hidden art talent that you can use to fill in the gaps in your design. It'll give you a much more personal feeling to that space. I love decorating great rooms and kitchens. They are the most fun room to decorate. You can put so much of your personality in them and it's so much easier to commit to a style when you have something to inspire you. For me, it started out with that small little fish pillow. Find what inspires you and make your room a great room.